person has something to contribute into the world. I started off as actually as an educator. I was a middle school teacher for seven incredible years. And then back in 2011, I took, apparently was gonna be one year off to see what would happen if I put my all into this passion since I was a kid to really bring people together through the power of kindness. And that one year off led to uh, now nine years and growing. Uh, and a, and a tremendous, it just, it's been absolutely incredible. The way in which we spread our message is through inspirational media like film, through education, developing and implementing curriculum, through international events and leadership training programs, as well as through technology. And I can say that crew has been a very, very, very big part of, of our growth, and I'm excited for it to continue to be a part of our growth uh, as we build specifically our leadership training uh, portal of this, of this program. We have an event every year uh, called Dance for Kindness. It's a global event that takes place in over 50 countries, 120 cities around the world bringing together volunteer group leaders from age 10 to age 76, each organizing events within their own cities um, in a really amazing way, but I'm sure we'll get more into that. Thank you, Arlie. It's great to have you. Thanks for making time to join us. And I would like to introduce um, now Elizabeth, who is a, a leader at uh, Free Forest School. Hi, I apologize in advance for background child chatter, that three, running <laughs> So I'm going to do my best. They've been instructed to try to stay quiet. Um, yeah, so I'm with Free Forest School, and um, we our mission is to expand access to unstructured nature play um, for children and to kind of like institutionalize that as a central part of childhood um, or reinstitutionalize that as a central part of childhood. Um, and the way that we do that um, primarily so far has been by empowering caregivers um, in local communities to um, facilitate outdoor play groups. Um, these are play groups where the parents bring their kids and stay with their kids. And we just have a volunteer there who kind of holds a loose structure of like, we meet, we share a snack, we have an intro talk, we wander down a trail, we don't have like a set destination in mind, it's very child led. We find a place to stop and the main part is the kids just kind of play freely in a nature space for about an hour and then we close with a circle time. So that's kind of the model. We're right now about to dive into a process of kind of community visioning and restructuring, rethinking our model, but that's the model we've been um, working with so far and that crew has been um, allowing us to really um, expand. So previously we were kind of working just via Google Docs and emails and stuff to train local um, folks who wanna start a new chapter in their um, city or town. And um, so we've been primarily using the crew platform for training of directors who are the people who launch and lead chapters and then they um, kind of oversee a team of local facilitators who facilitate individual meetups um, and those are kind of weekly at the same location so that's an, another central component of our model just to like have the kids be in the same place and get kind of used to it over time and and um, kind of get to witness the changes that happen and uh, in themselves and in the, the nature space. Awesome, thank you, Elizabeth. Um, and hi to your little buddies in the back. <laughs> it's great to see them. Um, so my next question, I, it's just a question that I'm uh, personally always curious about is, how do grassroots movements grow? It's, it's um, um, yeah, something we all wanna see for our communities to expand our reach and our impact and, and share our tools and, and resources with others. So. I am wondering if you'd be uh, if you'd like to share how your organization grows. How do you recruit? Do you how have you how's your growth come to be? And and maybe even because both of you are actually some of the largest uh, grassroots movements that Crew serves. Um, so I'm always very impressed <laughs> by how you just seem to attract people to your networks. Um, maybe Elizabeth, Elizabeth do we start or do you want? <laughs> um, sure, I can start. Um, <laughs> ready now, it's quiet. Um, so, uh, we kind of um, primarily have been spreading through word of mouth, you know, we started just with one chapter um, that was our founder kind of just wanted to start a play group for, you know, kids to connect with other families and, you know, started a Facebook group um, and overnight a thousand people joined. So she kind of said, okay, I'll start a thing and start getting other people to help with it. And, and then she moved to Austin and kind of the same thing happened. And then she moved to Minneapolis and the same thing happened. So there were already kind of these three different 
places that she was kind of keeping in touch with and supporting local leaders. And then just as those people then kind of spread the word about it to other folks in their network, they said, we want to do this too. And so she kind of got roped into, you know, starting to support um, more and more chapters. And eventually, um, Irene Dooling um, joined in as um, kind of, she was one of the Austin <laughs> initial folks in Austin. And she joined in to kind of help support and, and formalize some of that and kind of really took over the one-on-one -on -one interactions with the individual chapter directors. Um, Facebook has been kind of a big source for us of community building. We each, each chapter has its own Facebook group. So that's a way a lot of people find us um, and find out that you can share this with their, uh, their friends. So that's, and then that's been another key piece. It's just like people saying, oh, I do this thing and it's awesome. And talking to their friends in other cities who are like, oh, I want one. And so then they can come to yeah. the website to start. Um, and, um, just um, Google kind of search engine uh, stuff is another big way that people have found us. Just people looking for that, shh, that sort yeah. of thing. <laughs> and, yeah. Uh, yeah, I feel like before school is just like an idea that, every parent who, I mean, as a parent, I, I had heard about it before we met with y'all. So it's, you guys are definitely a, a well-known movement in the young kid parents <laughs> community. Elizabeth, I gotta and say, happiest baby ever. I, I like, I love, loving it. <laughs> love it. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> so just a bit about how, how sort of we got started with, with Life Us Inside. The truth is with any grassroots movement, the key to getting it out there is just to start and not to be so nitpicky about things being perfect. And that's coming from a very big perfectionist. I, uh, <laughs> and I have to tell you, sometimes when you let go of being so super perfect and you're just, and you, and you forget about the how and you focus on the why you're doing something, that's really when the magic is able to come into play. And it's, it's very important for us to, to, you know, to remember that. Just to give you an example, when I started this organization, so like I told you, I was a middle school teacher, okay? I happened to have had a background in film production. And during my summer off from teaching, right before I left, right before I started the entity, I decided to shoot a film. I wanted to be able to show people this contagious power that kindness has to impact change. And I used a means that, that I knew. I knew how to communicate via film, but it had been so many years, like seven years since I'd done film, I was super nervous. And I created this thing. And the truth is nobody saw the film for one year because I went straight into teaching and it was the following year that I took off. Long story short, I put the film up online and I didn't have a website. I had nothing, okay? I was a middle school teacher, went from college, to, that was it. And within, within months, the video went crazy viral. I mean, it's reached well over 100 million people globally. And the film is a big part of the way that people find us. Now I'm aware that not every time, even though in the beginning when that happened, I'm like, wow, this is what happens when you put a video on YouTube. I had no idea what was going on. But the concept is, is just to start because the way that I built my community, I didn't have a website, I didn't have a program yet, literally just started it, and all I had was a YouTube channel. So I used what I had. Everybody has something. And what do I mean that I used what I had? Well, I had people watching the YouTube video and leaving comments. And so all I did for maybe 20 out of the 24 hours every day was answer comments. Literally, there were that many. That, there were thousands that were coming in a day. That was all I was doing, responding to comments. And I didn't know it as I was doing it because it was just natural to me. I like connecting with people. That I was actually building a network. Who knew I was building a network? I had no clue. And relationships started to be built. And then someone's like, well, why don't you start a Facebook page? I'm like, okay. And then I started creating content for that. Uh, the, the name of the video is called Kindness Boomerang. For those of you that want to check it out, it's one people message. And so from there, things grew. And now I had this Facebook page that I was creating content for. And how did the biggest program come about? It came about because now all those people that were already connecting with me, we were friends. I had a dream. I know it sounds crazy, but I did. I had a dream. And it was a dream about uh, in front of the UN, okay, in, in the US, and there were thousands of people from all different countries, and everybody was holding their country flag, and on the back of their country flag, it had the life vest inside motto that said, by living kindly, change is possible. And people were singing and dancing, and I wake up from this dream, I'm like, oh my gosh, 
I have to do this. Because dance is such a great way. When people are dancing, they're not upset. They're not in the, wanting to, to hurt somebody. They're feeling awesome, right? They're releasing endorphins. They're loving everything. So I said, how great would it be to be able to bring countries from around the world to dance together through something called Dance for Kindness? Now, I knew nothing about running a flash mob, knew nothing about dance. I'm not a dancer. I'm a basketball player, okay? So I knew zero. But what I did know is the skills I had from being a teacher. And what do you know from being a teacher? You know process. How to learn something and then be able to give it over to somebody else that doesn't have a clue about how to do it and still be able to teach it. And so that's exactly what I did. I did a local event just in New York, a flash mob. And as I did it, I learned how to do a flash mob. All these small things. And I put down a handbook. My handbook initially it was five pages on a Google Doc, okay? Now it's like broken into like six, it's like 75 pages, okay? Uh, and I made a video and I put it up on, uh, I put it up on Facebook and I said, hey guys, here's what I want to do. I want to do a global event for World Kindness Day and get group leaders from around the world that are going to run this event. And on the same day, we're going to take the same song and the same dance and we're all going to do it together. Who's in? And 30 people reached out from 15 countries. And I started give, started it with just this, you know, handbook that I wrote. And I met with each one of them. And again, little did I know what I was doing was building community by having these one-on-one -on -one meetings until it grew to then, you know, 25 countries, 30 countries, 50 countries. And it came to the point where my, my capacity wasn't reaching the amount of people that were interested. There were 500 group leaders interested in joining us, but I'm one person and I commit to meeting with every group leader individually. Like, how am I gonna do this? And all of the process, you know, back and forth of the email, send them this email, then the next email, crazy. And then I was very lucky to find crew. And what they helped me to do essentially was to streamline all of these processes so that I could focus more on actually building the community even further where they can come on and they can get this, you know, the easy steps and gain points and gain badges and so on and so forth. And I'm sure we're going to get more into that. But how do you start? You start by not being afraid and by recognizing that nothing is ever perfect. I didn't have a website the first year I ran Dance for Kindness and we had 3,500 people join us from around the world. But the minute that you empower people and you bring them as part of your team, and they feel that sense of authenticity that you, you feel for them the same that you feel for yourself. You create something special, and that's something that people want to get behind. Mm -hmm. And from there, it grows and it grows and it grows. But it's just about starting and knowing it's not going to be perfect. If I waited for it to be perfect, I may still not have started Life Fest Inside. So, yeah. Orly, Orly, I'm so pumped. I love listening to you speak. Thanks for sharing your story. and. <laughs> And um, I, I have to say that the um, program managers that I that I have found are amongst the easiest and uh, easiest to work with and like faster to launch a community are oftentimes teachers. I think there's just something about the training that education school gives folks that it um, yeah it, it's very very similar to what it takes to orient someone into starting a chapter, starting a group a team and leading um a local community so it's uh yeah it's no surprise that you're a teacher um so i think since you were kind of already going in that direction you were starting yeah. to talk about uh the way the process that you've built from the beginning to train and orient these local leaders who then would lead small groups or actually smaller huge groups to to engage in this um dance events all around the world um, I'd love to, my next question for both of you is how do you use a crew platform to run your communities? And I think something both of your organizations have in common is so far, at least, um, you've used crew to train your local leaders. Um, so Orly, is it okay if we, if yeah, we continue no, with course. you and so maybe- A lot of expanding yeah. to be able to grow. You need to realize, and we all know this, right? No one person can do everything. The real goal of, of the leader, okay, the person at the top, is not to actually do everything, is to empower others to be able to do. Uh, and th that's why training is a very, very important part of it. 
the way that this initially was, I, I had set it up in a way that because at the end of the day, I was getting onto a phone call with each and every group leader, I needed to ensure myself that the rate of drop off was so small that I wasn't wasting time on somebody that may drop off to begin with. So it started, mm -hmm. just so you can understand, it started with people, you know, fill out a form online and they have to answer certain questions. It's got it be a little bit hard for them, but not too hard. They answer certain questions and boom, they get a handbook and then they read the handbook and then they watch a tutorial video and then they, they were emailing me back and I had to keep track of what step they were up to. And then only once they got to those steps did I then meet with them. Now, what mm -hmm. were we able to do through the crew? Because the way that the program works is that we open it up to group leaders, which is anybody that is interested in running an event in their specific location. And they have a few months to go through the training. And then after the training, we open up the event that people can register for the locations around the world, for these dance locations. And, you know, the, the group leader is in charge of various tasks, you know, that they need to be able to put in place. So what do we do? The first step is that when a group leader registered, and again, there's that registration process, they automatically received an email from us. And in that email that they received, even there, I created a short form tutorial video where I got them excited and I actually shared my screen to show them how to use the platform because there's only two reasons why people don't do things in this world. And I learned this from a mentor of mine. Number one is fear. Number two is a lack of perceived value. Now, if you can lower the fear of a person to do something and you can increase their perceived value, you have them. What does it mean that a person is fearful? They don't know what it entails. They're like worried. The more you can lower the fear of those that you're asking to come on board and show them the value that it's going to give them, the more likely they're going to sign on. And so the purpose of that video was to be able to help lower their fear, let them know that I'm going to be there to guide them through the process. I'm very detail oriented in those things. And then they'd come on. So before they even got to the platform, they understood what it was going to look like and what their responsibilities were. Setting and being very transparent and explaining expectations is important, but we also incorporate incentives. So I'll explain to you what I mean by that. So we created these tracks, right? I think number two is missing. It must not have been, I must have like unpublished it. It's probably a little. That's fine. But anyways, the way that it worked, we created in an easy visual way that even if it wasn't, it says step one, we, I wanted them to see it. Again, easy. People need things to be easy for them to actually follow through. And I learned that if you break things down and make things easy, there's no reason for them not to do it, especially if you incentivize them. So they come into step number one. And as you could see, they have an, you know, a welcome video, okay, just again, to make it more personal, to build that connection. And that's part of building that authenticity with the user and making them feel like they are part of your team because they are. They're not your fan, they're your friend. Um, then they go through you know, introducing themselves, if there's any technical things that they need to do. But what we did is, at, at the end of each of these, you'll see that there's a prompt over here, right? So there's something that they're asked to do. They watch a video and then, um, we're, we give them a prompt, like it says here, what's the name of the organization that created Dance for Kindness? This one is a very, very simple one. Again, and as they answer the prompt, they receive points. You can see here, they're, this where they're receiving 10 points. Again, for some of the, the prompts you're giving, they're very, very simple questions and it's just to give them points. And for some, it gets to be a little bit more difficult. Like here, share a little bit more about yourself or a fun fact. And it's a great way for the, these group leaders to connect, to share who they are, to be able to see their faces, to see their families' faces, to actually, you know, make it more personal. And the great thing is we incorporated even a point system whereby when they comment, and, and crew allows you to do this, where they comment or like or engage with other people's posts, they would then receive points as well. So you can comment on people's posts. Oh, that's such a great picture. I love that. And then they can, you know, do a thumbs up or whatever it may be. Once they go through this, these steps here, okay, and then it takes them to, it unlocks the next section. So each of our sections, for example, in our dashboard, all had prerequisites. Again, you want to make it as easy as possible for your users not to get lost. And people can easily get lost. What you think is very, very, very straightforward, others will not understand that it's straightforward. So the more you can be mindful, the better. And so, you know, we're now on step three, right? Always in yeah. each of the steps. For most of the steps, I have a video to begin each step where it's, where it's, I shortly explain to them what to expect. 
And what, what is a way that I did this, and especially within the, um, within the, within a lot of the videos you guys will see in one of the upcoming things. So here they had to customize their fundraising page. This whole thing was about fundraising. So I taught them, I showed them again, screen shared, how to create your fundraising page, your fundraising toolkit, fundraising activities. I give them points based on that. Well, that's going to be in another section, but here they're just learning. This is the, the training portion. This is not the actual doing. This is the training and for them to actually get certain th tasks in place, like creating their fundraising page, meaning nobody's an official group leader until they finish these seven steps and I actually get onto a call with them. Okay, and we ask different questions here, like what tools have been the most helpful, so on and so forth. If we go back to the dashboard for a moment, I'll just show you here and some, a trick that I've used. Um, so for example, here on watch the tutorial video, step number four, you know, for me, giving points and incentivizing our, our group leaders by giving them points and badges is really important. And I'm sure we'll take a look at how we can utilize that. But in each of these videos, okay? So again, I have like a tutorial guide. While they're watching the video, I have notes on what they're watching so that they can take notes. And you'll notice if you take a look, if you go to, let's say, go to section four for a moment on uh, the tutorial video, it, it will ask them, each of them, here, see it says, what is the code word mentioned? I did this a lot in my videos because I also posted, once they became group leaders, I wanted all of our group leaders to be up to speed with each other. So I would post update videos, but I didn't just post the video because how do you know somebody really completed it? They can say they completed it, but how do you know? So in the middle or somewhere in my video, I would mention a code word, whatever that code word was, it was always different. That means that they have to listen to the whole video because they don't know where my code word is. And in order for them to get points, they need to be able to respond correctly so that I know that they actually done it. Now, within each step section, they can go through all the process, but in order to move on to the next bucket, it all had to be approved by the administrator where you can, you know, in, on the platform, you have an easy way to go in and to just check what they did. If they don't answer a question right, you can then respond to them. Hey, I think you, you, know, you misunderstood what we were asking here or whatever it may be. And again, it's to create accountability because at the end of the day, your group leaders need to be held accountable. As you can see right here, these are the badges. Based on badge, when you click on the badges, it will tell you what you need to complete in order to get those badges. Uh, so when you click, it tells you, for example, you have to complete step five, secure your location in order to get this specific badge and so on and so forth. And these badges and the points eventually were exchangeable for prizes. So for example, uh, on the platform, you have the ability to see who has the most points. And so group leaders that obtained the most points um, then received a certain prize. Like they got a free kindness curriculum for a school of their choice in their location and so on and so forth. Um, the discussions is a really great tool as well. You'll notice on the left-hand side Actually, here, it says... Like, sorry to interrupt you early, but I just for... Um for time's limitations let me oh, sorry, uh, sorry 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 just say no you're doing great thanks so much for taking us through your track structure i just want to point out one uh quick thing here on your on your platform which is that that i really like the way you do this um where you have a dashboard set for your leaders in training and then when they they earn badges along the way and when they finish their seventh one they become an official team leader and their dashboard changes to the next set of requirements as you take them, as they go through their event and then have some deliverables after the event. So I just, I really like how you created this automatic yeah, that's way. A very useful, students. That's a very useful thing. And then you can give them various tests that they can do. So if you're wanting them to do something, you can give them these various tests where they can thereby even mm -hmm. you know, obtain more points and that helps to incentivize. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thanks, thanks, Orly. Of I um, I'd like to ask uh, the same question of Elizabeth. Elizabeth, if you can just take us through how you use Crew to train your leaders uh, who mobilize their communities locally. Yeah, there's a lot of similarities um, from. Oh, hey, kids, hush. Um, there's a lot of similarities from what Orly described. Luckily, so I don't have to go in depth um, on that stuff because she's covered that. So yeah, we we've done a similar thing of. Um, having kind of an order so you can see our tracks are numbered so people know what order and you have to complete kind of each one before you can get to the next one. 
And, you know, we start with kind of orienting folks to the big picture in track one of like, what is Free Forest School? How do the chapters work? Um, what's kind of the core of what we do? And then what comes next kind of provides an overview of, um, of what to expect for the rest of the training. Um, and we kind of break it down in a couple different ways, visually and in text, so that people know what to expect. Um, so that's where they start. And then for um, uh, number two, we do just the basics of the organization. Then we get into number three, how they're running their chapter and what that looks like then get out and scout. So that's about finding their first location for their first meetup. So we give them some information about what to look for in a site and why do we do things this way where we meet at the same place over and over. Um, how to facilitate. So our chapter directors are typically the first facilitators of events. So we train them in that. And then so far, we've only been training our directors and then they have been in charge of training their facilitators. So they would kind of take this training that they got on base camp and they would provide in a different way. Um, usually like in person, you know, I, I'm a director and so what I do is I host kind of sessions where interested facilitators come and I lead them through a regular session and give some commentary along the way so they've seen it, which is helpful, but we also um, are, the plan has been to, to shift to also having our facilitators go through the crew platform um, for their training so that, so that everyone kind of has some basic, um, like kind of same ideas of what it is versus relying on directors to communicate all of that. It will take some of the burden off of directors um, by, by having it come centrally and just helps us to ensure that there's kind of like the same experience being had, the experience that we want folks to have um, when they when they work with Free Forest School is had by everybody. So, um, and also just gives us a chance to like communicate more directly with all our volunteers as opposed to relying on our directors to communicate. That's been one thing we've been excited about with crew and um okay kiddos can be right uh -uh. Hush. it's okay <laughs> um so um yeah one thing we're really excited about crew eventually our plan has been to um to get um all of our hey, participants oh, no. rigel um all of, rigel you need to hush now okay hush now um, get all of our participants onto the platform and do our event scheduling. We have been doing all of that via Facebook, um, but we're really excited about the crew platform to be able to be a place where we can do that. So we are less reliant on Facebook and have more direct communication with our participants versus having 150 different Facebook groups that we have to go into and hope that the algorithm presents our, um, our content if we mm -hmm. want to everybody so that's a plan that we're we're we've been working on shifting to we'll see kind of what happens with this revisioning um, um so yeah that's so that's kind of that um track five and yeah and then so once they've been kind of oriented to those information capella you need to give it to her right now. <laughs> capella okay. oh. um nope Okay, so, um, so yeah, then we get into kind of the logistics of actually the things that they need to do in order to, um, to actually launch their chapter. So once they've kind of understood and received some training, then we have actual logistical things that they need to do. So we have them submit some content that we're going to use for their chapters web, like page on our website. Um, we orient them to how we use Facebook and have them kind of request their group to be created and then we create it. So we, there's some back and forth here and that's where we've used what Orly talked about that you can um, choose which um, things require approval from admins to say okay yes you've completed this versus which things you can um, you can just like have them say that they've completed so yeah. that's been helpful to us we've we've really limited it down because we have very limited kind of um, staff working um, on this so to say what are the things we really need eyes on to make sure okay they get it or this is an important thing versus what things we can just like we want them to have seen and we're just going to trust that they've seen it as they go through so mm -hmm. we've kind of um decided about that um yeah and then once they've kind of worked through this process um of these 10 tracks then they're pretty much then by the end of it they've kind of launched and they've been giving given permissions um kind of access to our national forums and given their like admin status on their facebook group and their content's been adding to our webpage so all those mm -hmm. things are happen through yeah. this 
the goal was has been to like also then have ongoing content that direct that directors can access after they've launched that can support them um, and we haven't uh, fully kind of developed that so but we would use the same kind of system um, that Orly has of, of um, kind of you know they earn badges as they go and once they've earned all the badges then they get their new role and they'll have a new dashboard with the new content yeah Thanks, Elizabeth. And I just want to say <laughs> the obvious, right? Like, I have two kids, and right now they're at a neighbor's house. Uh, Thank goodness. But it just always happens. And when you must need them <laughs> to stay away from the computer, they go crazier. They somehow know. Um, <laughs> and the veil is down now. I think this is now all of our realities. <laughs> so. Um, thanks for sharing, Elizabeth. And I think uh, my next question that I, I just like to, and it's actually the last question, and then we'll go to the community for, for questions and answers, is um, in, yeah, in, a, in a couple of minutes, what would you say your top two or three lessons are when you're working to mobilize communities online who are doing real work offline, right? They're, they're creating, they're working on projects, they're doing dance-a-thons, they're leading groups of parents, et cetera. Um, what have you learned over the years that you'd like to share with our community today? Maybe, Orly, we can start with you. So I think, okay, first of all, it's really important to create a community. That meaning they themselves feel very connected. So one of the things that, um, you know, that I've done, and again, I've also utilized, you know, some of what Elizabeth was saying, I've also utilized Facebook in this way. And this past year, I was trying to move people over onto the discussion on the platform, which is sometimes a little bit more difficult for them. But every time I meet with a group leader, right, and I have that initial conversation, I take a, you know, a screenshot and I upload it onto our Life Essence Side channels and I introduce them with a little bit about who they are. And all the other group leaders, both on the private group leaders and within the public, um, everybody you know, welcomes them aboard. When people feel the sense of connection, when, and, and they're supporting each other, to me, that's a, a huge way in order to create community. These people live in different countries, speak different languages. I have people that really don't speak English so well, okay? I mean, they're from all over. Yet, they connect with each other and they love each other. We had actually a marriage that came from group leaders that we brought together, <laughs> which is really, really exciting for me. So, it's just about um, creating community, whether it's posing a question, whether you have like a question of the week, and when you incentivize and you highlight, let's say, a member of the week or member of the month for something that they're doing, that really helps tremendously. Um, having people share about where they're coming from, because if they're, a, if they're a global community or people from wherever, sharing those experiences, that's what builds, I mean, that's what builds a relationship, you know? Um, and we've had to now think of you know, I've had a meeting with uh, group leaders from around the world, how we can incorporate our event because we can't do Dance for Kindness this year physically because of Corona. So how do we bring meaning, infuse meaning into, this event, into the event, even though we can't physically be together? And so we've come up with an amazing way, which I haven't even shared with you at all, but um, uh, of how we can utilize the platform, crew platform, to create kindness challenges that as you complete the challenges you unlock the next challenge and so on and so forth so just being creative of how you can more connect digitally and you know bring them together and let people get to know each other so and that's that's my that's my thoughts at least thanks orly how about you elizabeth what are your top two or three uh best practices for engaging communities online yeah um I mean, for us, something that's been really beneficial kind of has been the photos, like encouraging people to share photos of their um, participation in the events, um, because that for us has been like a, a way to get people who are interested and who join the Facebook group, but who like, like Orly was talking about the fear, right? Like not the fear of the unknown and not knowing what to expect. And by being able to see photos of other people doing it um, has helped. And we also encourage people to share kind of like after... After each event, we encourage, um, what we do is we, we kind of ask for one person to volunteer to be the photographer so that we don't have everyone with their phones out, right? We like to kind of keep phones away, but we have one person kind of as the designated photographer, and that's just a volunteer um, 
at the, you know, we just ask for a volunteer at the beginning of the event. And then we ask them to just post that to the Facebook group that's for each um, chapter so that they can see, um, see what happened. And we ask them to give like a little, just like say something that happened, you know, a little, little kind of couple sentence synopsis. And those have been really helpful, I think, for people just being like, oh, wow, like those kids, you know, look at those kids covered in mud. And like, oh, this, you know, I see this story that a parent is sharing about how their kid was really nervous about climbing a tree, but then, you know, they watched the big kids do it and then they did it and they felt so proud, you know, so, or, or a big thing is to encouraging people to not just post the positive, but also post the negative, because that can be a mm. big like oh my kid won't be all happy all the time they're gonna throw a tantrum at the trailhead and refuse to go another step so people say that too and say like and that's fine so that's been another big thing is like being realistic um and and encouraging people that like even disasters are expected and accepted and um yeah, so those yeah. Are just, i was just gonna jump in I, I know i noticed we had a bunch of people working on um uh, on the call today, they're working on a lot of things around health initiatives um, and stuff. And I was wondering if there were specific, almost um, challenges that you've been facing um, with starting new programs or facilitating services, especially now in the world of COVID, where everybody is jumping to online gatherings. Um, I'd love to invite everybody to maybe you know, ask some questions or, you know, or even talk about some pain points that you're facing right now. And don't be shy. <laughs> Hi, this is Nutricia with Buckner. I think I got on late, so I wasn't able to indu and introduce myself. So this is Nutricia with Buckner. I run our youth program. Hello, ladies. Have hi, bad hi. hair day. So y'all see my picture. Hi. <laughs> One of my questions, um, working with Buckner, we have a, a community uh, coordinator. She is doing an excellent job with me, getting the community involved in my after school virtual program. So one of the goals uh, is, I think it's kind of challenging, is to how do I really tap into that community to really make an impact when it comes to the student's education? And I'm looking for um, to, to, uh, I'm looking for certified teachers to be able to hop on um, and kind of meet some of those parents' need. But I don't want a program without the impact, if that makes sense. I really mm -hmm. want to be able to meet each painter and child's need. And I just wonder, where do I start and how? Because we did a summer program, but it was challenging. Everybody said it was excellent, but it was new. So I'm still trying to see what, how can I stand out for the uh, virtual after school program? What could I do different? Mm. Wow, that's a great question. And, and you need it to be virtual right at this point, I suppose. Yes, we um, are doing virtual. Yes, ma'am. How are you working yeah. on, how are you working on recruiting people? Uh, we are doing email blasts. We are doing phone calls. We are doing flyers. Uh, that's what we're doing at this present time. We're doing flyers, email blasts, uh, remind app. Thank you, Jay. Remind app. Um, any type of question are you guys doing um how visible are you are, are you know you guys doing videos where you're really speaking out to people like actually recording yourselves speaking about the program and why people should join it because there are loads of people that get emails right think about how many emails come through and inboxes get completely uh full people generally i would say I mean, again this is just my experience people don't connect with organizations they connect with people so yes. wow. by being I able to I... show yourself and tell your tell a story but and, and, really, and it doesn't have to be professionally filmed or whatever like just by actually being able to to whatever create a video whether it's on yeah. however basis you want it to be it really does it gets people to know who you are, who the community is, and, and, and gets them to want to ask questions. Mm. That, to me, is a, is a really good way to do I think. Yeah. Wow. I, think I like that. With, That's excellent. Um, Thank you. 
I think we struggle with the red tape aspect because we are an established well, organization and mm. we can't even post a flyer on our Facebook. It has to go through like two different channels, three different channels, and then they post oh, wow. it. So I've been a little more um, creative with using TikTok. I work with the teen program. Mm. I saw my after school teen program. What? All the teens are on TikTok. So we've done TikTok. That's kind of how I've gotten around that. But even then I was told, don't let it say Buckner on it. So mm. I'm not supposed to. So I think wow. we struggle with the red tape issue, Miss Tricia. Oh. Would, you, would you agree with that? Yes, I do agree with you, uh, Jay. I forgot we do uh, go through several channels. But one of the things I will um, uh, recommend after this call is to reach out to Maria, Miller, Lisa, and see could they do a video for us. Mm. You yeah, know, that, would, that would probably be We ought to be, be able option. to get in some type of way. Because I yeah. like the video idea. I like how she said that people need to see the face of the community. So I think that's excellent. So I, I honestly believe that Buckner uh, probably will go for that, like uh, with Ms. Shanice. So I will reach out. I think it's an excellent idea because I believe that's what we need at this present time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could do something cool where, where each of the staff members share like why they love Buckner, you know, like why why are you passionate about it? What is your personal story about it? And, and each week could be another person sharing their personal passion behind why they, why they love it, why they chose to work there, not somewhere else. That, right. that speaks to people, you know? Yeah. I, I, I would also jump in and just say, I think one of the things that was game changing for our organization um, and, and was having that home place that they can connect with us as a, um, like where, where people can feel like they can log into our world, right? As opposed to just everything being facilitated across a, a website, that's exciting, that's great. We have our messaging, we've got our pieces. But then I think once they're invited into our program and we log them in, like that's why for us having um, a platform where they could do that made a huge um, difference and just sort of the conversation and in, and in what people do, that they feel like they can reach us um, and that they're connected with us and much more engaged that way. So that was something from us that really made a big difference. Yeah, I'd say too, Marty, I don't know if this is part of the issue, um, Utrecht and Jade, but if numbers are part of the issue, we, we also work with several organizations who mobilize college students and who serve as mentors to younger uh, high school students or sometimes even younger um, and then having some kind of onboarding process like Marty and you know you saw Arlie and Elizabeth like what an onboarding process could look like some are longer some are shorter but just uh, yeah tapping tapping into the extended community that is um, in your area could also be a way to expand the number of, of volunteers who are you know supporting your your young folks and families from the program. One other thought I had too is just about um, being a, a, a hub where people can connect to a broader community of other people in the same situation could also be like appealing mm. to folks, you know, to like, because if you, you can provide value, but the, all the people participating can provide value to each other by saying, mm -hmm. here's what about this. So if you can create or facilitate those sorts of connections, that can also. Okay, Thanks, thank Elizabeth. You. Thanks, great question, Nutrition and Jade. Does anyone else have a question or a comment, um, a thought they'd like to share? <laughs> it's all good. Great. I mean, I think, so go ahead, Marty. I saw you. On no, 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 it's great. Um, this has been super helpful. I actually, what, one of the things that I've always really benefited from in terms of being part of like this whole network of crew is that I've learned so much from the other organizations. Um, and so, and I, you know, we've been running these webinars from different angles for the last couple of weeks. Um, and it's so much, it's interesting to see how much that's actually transforming our program. So um, thanks both Orly and Elizabeth. I've learned a lot today. It was fantastic. Yes, ditto Marty. Thank you. Thank you, Elizabeth and Orly for sharing for, yeah, you're, it's, I'm so inspired personally by you individually, by your movements that you've mobilized and continue engaging. Um, thanks for taking the time. And for everybody else who joined, it's a pleasure to meet you. Uh, please feel free to reach out if 
if um, you think there's there's a way that we could collaborate or help support your communities, your your um, your programs. You know, it it doesn't just have to be about the need for a platform. I I love just learning from uh, organizations doing wonderful work and and then connecting. What are your needs? What, are, what especially in this new new uh, uncertain times we're facing? Um, if there's a way we can serve you, or sometimes there's other recommendations of uh, or other programs or tools that I, I could connect you with, um, and I'd be happy to do that. So I'll put my my email here. I'll share my screen. If you wanna, um, that info goes to me, but you can also uh, contact me at tallies at 2030.org. I'm putting it here. Um, and yes, I, I hope you have a great rest of your week. Thanks again for joining. Marty, thank you for getting this uh, webinar series started and finished with us. It's been, it's been wonderful. Sam, you're still uh, the highest participant winner of the series. <laughs> and yeah, thank you for all the work you all do with your communities. I think, you know, in this crazy times, as the world changes, institutions change, investing in communities in my mind is the one sure investment. It's, it's grounding and, and it's, we all need it in our lives. So thank you for your work. Um, and that is it, we are finished. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay guys. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.